What's up, YouTube? Steve from the Whiskey Watch next to... Sniff from Scotch and Sniff. And we're here today to talk about peat, where it came from, what to do with it when you uh, are in the middle of a fire, and how to get into peat if you're not into peated whiskeys. And maybe why Sniff hates it so much, but... We're definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna get into why I hate it so much. It's not that I hate it so much. That's this is a good part of the discussion. It's that it doesn't agree one hundred percent with my palate, and so because of that, I really find myself trying to uh, avoid it in certain ways. Like when it's overwhelming, it's no good. But when it's subtle and balanced, it can be really delicious. You just have to know what you're looking for. So. Um, when it's burning your driveway, that's not the peat that you like. <laughs> that's yes. not the peat that I like. All right, so let's first, get into it. Let's start with what peat is. A lot of people don't know that peat is actually pieces of dried earth from Scotland where they go into the ground and like it's super wet over there because it's an island. They dig into the ground, they dig out blocks of earth, dry them, and then use them as a fuel source to dry out the malted barley and grains. So that's like essentially what peat is, dried earth. Which again, brings me back to why does Sniff hate it so much? Because he's basically saying he hates the earth. I, Correct. That's what I got. Wait, no, that's not what I, you, may, that, kind of. So I, I hate burnt dried earth, but not all of it. So uh, the French have a word for this terroir, which just means mm. where it's from, the, like the location where it's from. So when you hear French fancy people talking about wine, like, ooh, I love the terroir of this boudoir. Like, whatever it is they're talking about, I just oh, said boudoir. boudoir. That's weird. <laughs> I meant Bordeaux, but hey, the, it's the early. The There's whiskey. The location of the bedroom. <laughs> I know right. the location. Anyways, right. so, so you've, got, you've got this earth that they kick up, and like, unfortunately, uh, parts of the earth that they decide to dig and burn, mm. uh, where it comes from really does matter. So in, in, in Isla, where they have like, you know, you've got your Lafroy's, you've got your Ardbeg's, you've got your- uh, Lagavulin. Lagavulin, no, Lagavulin, the Evergreen. Where you have these things, um, they take the earth and they cut it up. Unfortunately, because it's such a small island, you get salinity, you get um, kelp, you'll get things from the ocean, which is really weird, but at the same time, uh, can be tasty depending on what your palate likes. So if you're not somebody who likes those types of flavors like squid ink and other things from the ocean, you're probably not gonna be into it. <laughs> squid ink is a really i mean that's one that you'd be surprised how often that comes up but um, everybody watching this has tasted squid ink so if you and if you haven't you should get on it if you haven't go to a fancy japanese restaurant i promise you they'll have some you can try it it's an acquired taste and have some sake right afterwards because you're gonna need it. I, yeah you're gonna need it i've had dreams where i vomit let's after not straight. get into that anyways right? so yeah so 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 the terroir matters so different parts of peat like i don't even think i put a highland park up here but highland park is so far north their island doesn't have the same taste so when they peat their whiskey and their barley um to make whiskey uh their peat actually tastes much more floral because trees don't grow there and because certain other things like the dead vegetation that goes into the earth aren't the same so flavor profile completely different right. which is weird because i didn't even put a highland park up here but here we go for the next take. All right, so so if you uh, if you want to try uh, different peated whiskeys, we can talk about these right here. These to me are if you're not a peat fan and you want to try peated whiskeys that aren't super offensive, that taste like feet, right. rubber bands. Um, oh my gosh, there's tar, so many creosote. tar. There's so many, especially creosote. There's so many disgusting notes that again, like Ardbeg, Corey Reckon, and the Oigadale that peat not, lovers. Not disgusting. Not disgusting. Someone's different. <laughs> right. Somebody else likes these flavors. They're not I'll, my bag. I'll drink Laphroaig, I'll drink Ardbeg, I'll drink all of them, but Wally's palate just doesn't like burning tar. Or, exactly. And some people do. Because some people get campfire and bacon, and those are two things I love, sitting by a campfire eating bacon. That sounds amazing, but it's not campfire and good bacon. It's like bacon wrapped feet, you know, that have walked in leather shoes for 30 miles wet the whole time. So the first one we're gonna start with here is the Laphroaig Triple Wood. <clears throat> this right here is pretty awesome because one of the good ways to get rid of the power of peat is to add sherry to it. So they've got some sherry casks that they've thrown in there and that's really sweetened it up a little bit. Right. Not so much that it's overwhelming, but it's a really good balance of like, here's our peat, here's some sweet sherry. And I think together. if you notice here, what Wally has set up peat wise, you're gonna find some sherry, also some sherry, I think yep, on actually, the dark yeah. cove, some rum. rum, and then some more sherry. Yeah. And then just a very <laughs> light, heathery, peat that again speaks more to wally's palate than maybe your your usual peat head. so let's keep going down so dark cove you've talked about that a lot on youtube and instagram yep and it 
you and it like kind of just <laughs> love each other We're so much. We're besties. Yes. BFFs forever. Right. But yeah, it's the the first Phil Sherry cast that they use for these. It just it rounds it out so well that it's just absolutely delicious. So, I, but I even find peat heads who love this though. Right. Because they're still getting those Ardbeg notes in the background that they really, really like. It's a, it's a great crossover to get someone who thinks that Pete will just blow you away, like, say, a 10-year-old Lefroy. Yes. You give them this guy. It's a bridge between, uh, the, like, a, someone who loves sherry, who loves a wine, wine-seasoned whiskey. Get them a little bit more into Pete, and then maybe they'll maybe they'll go down through the Ardbeg range, or maybe go to Laga, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Who knows? That's- but so that's part of the problem. So if you don't like that smoky whiskey, that typical smoky whiskey, it's okay. These are going to be good to try to get into it. But if you still find yourself like me, like I mean, I mean for years now, I've really tried. And people are like, oh, you'll start to like it, you'll start to like it. I just don't. Like, it's just not my thing. It's it's one of his major flaws. But <laughs> moving, moving past that. Let's... No one's perfect. <laughs> no one's perfect. No whiskey is perfect. It's never going to be like... Wally and I will never agree on every whiskey that we try by by a far measure, actually. <laughs> Apparently. But moving moving past the difference in palettes, let's get to this one because this one is fun. This one, this one I got to go to the Philadelphia launch of Fire and Cane, and it, it it really is a divider, I would say. There are a lot of a lot of whiskey drinkers that enjoy this sweetness mixed with a little bit of smoke. And I don't know where Glenn Fittick gets their rum casks from. Maybe you do, but I've found some very good, <laughs> some very good consistency in the rum um, season, the rum matured whiskey that they do. And this is no exception to that. My my one thought with this was that they could have upped the smoke a little bit to even up the sweetness. But Wally, on the <clears throat> other hand, I, has some other thoughts. <laughs> I think it's just right the way that it is. That's the best part about it. The only thing that's it's weird because you think it could use more smoke. And to me, it's just the right amount because sometimes I'll sit down and taste it. And based on what I've eaten during the day and everything else, like sometimes all I get is that smoke. And I'm like, mm. okay, this is super peated. Were you eating bacon wrapped feet that S- night, perhaps? <laughs> Whatever you're into. Yeah, like, right? <laughs> hey, that was your tasting note earlier. Bacon wrapped feet by the fire. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you you got to try these things. If you don't try them, you won't know what they taste like. Oh boy, I'll pass. <laughs> And then, like, sometimes I'll sit there and I'll drink it and it's, like, pure sugar. Just, like, sugar cane rum. It's so good. So, it's, you know, so it's one, a good balance. One thing I did with this, I actually have at home the travel retail exclusive um, peated Glenfiddich. Not, oh, no yeah. age statement the on it. The vintage cask. And I actually blended it with the 21-year, the Grand Reserva rum reserve, yeah. whatever they call it these days. Um and I was able to do a different different fractions of smoke and then the the rum aged one. And I actually found that a a fifty percent twenty one year old and a fifty percent peated actually tasted a little bit better. Get you than pretty, this. Oh, yeah, okay. It was it it was just the right note of sweetness and then a little bit of smoke on the back. That's but a fun little experiment to try. That actually kind of leads me to this one too, because even yeah, though nope. this isn't rum, this is a very good job of a little bit of sweetness for me. And then some good smoke, that Arbed's, Arbeg smoke on the back. Yeah, so for me, that one actually pushes it a little bit the other way, where the Dark Cove is a little sweeter because of sherry. Mm-hmm. This one's a little, actually a little more peated, so you get a little more smoke and a little less sherry, which for people who love peat, you're going to like even more. Right. But for people who love sweetness, it's really going to be like a little bit of an experiment of like, how much do I like this? Yeah. Is this my thing? And this will it'll be a good tell for you right. to let you know like, oh, I definitely want to go into smoke. Or I definitely do not want to go it's, to smoke. It's very much like almost the edge of the cliff in the peat, right? Like <laughs> you either take that jump and believe that you can fly, or you go back the other way and get into the shared stuff again. <laughs> we don't talk about illegal commercials here on Scotch and Snake. <laughs> no, banned commercials are a banned subject on this show from what I hear. So moving right along. So we've got the last one here is the Balvenny. <laughs> The Balvenie Peat Week is fantastic. It's something they do. They do this yearly, right? I think it's a yearly release that they so do. Um, so they've done this for a while, and just just the one week a year, they end up peating some barley, and that's what they make. And then they come out with this cool bottle of like. So it's to me, it's this is another one. I think I put it on this side of the table for a reason. It's another one that's right on the edge. So I love Balvenie normally, <clears throat> and this one to me, again, depending on what I've eaten, depending on what's going on in my day. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. And sometimes I'm like, okay, this is a little much. And that's really a good point too. Like, your day can totally change how you come into these whiskeys. Absolutely. And 
it could be starting at breakfast, what flavor of coffee you had, then what you had for lunch, like all the way into the evening when you get into a dram, you have your, you know, everything's finally calmed down. And you, you might go through this and say, well, that's too much. This is too much, but I want some, I want some nice, like, <laughs> Heather, just Heather right. honeyed peat right here. It, it's, it's your palate. It's your day. But these are, again, a great range of options for the non, non hater, non peat <laughs> lover, really. It's, it gives you a spectrum of where to possibly start getting into peated whiskey. Absolutely. So if you guys think there are any whiskeys that we missed that are really, really good bridges between not so peated and peated whiskeys, definitely leave a comment down below and let us know because we'll check them out as always. Um, but otherwise, Steve, where can people find you on the Instagrams and the wherever? On the are? Instagrams, it's <clears throat> just the Whiskey Watch on Instagram. That's really my only whiskey footprint out You'll there. know him for his Legos. There will be uh, one or two Lego posts out there, so... <laughs> And again, over 21 to follow because you can't have toys oh and goodness. whiskey, you can't mix it. Oh my goodness, that's a long story. But like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. We also have the tip jar if you guys are into that on Patreon. And uh, yeah, no, that's um, that's it. That's, that's it, it for it. Pete. We can just take all these bottles now and just put them in the trash can. Just or, kidding. Or drink them. <clears throat> They're not Lafroy. He's giving them to me. If it was, I mean, if it was Laugh 10 cast strength trash can, Ardbeg, Wiggy Dale trash can. See, Glenn Fittick and Dalvenny can do no you wrong. You just lost like 10 subscribers. That's fine. That. You want to unsubscribe because I don't like Pete? <laughs> I mean, I, at least I try. Isn't that worth a, that's worth a sub? It's a, it's the old college try. He's, he's, he's <laughs> the old college try. Goodness. Later, YouTube. <clears throat>